All right, so this video is on factoring, but to understand factoring, you have to understand how uh, to multiply, because factoring is the opposite of multiplication, basically, or the, the, the inverse, basically. Um, so anyway, let's review the distributive property. So when you do the, have the distributive property, you have an item out front here, and um, you are multiplying, right? You're distributing each, you're multiplying each the thing to each part in the inside. So here it'll be three parts that you're distributing to. All right, so we do that, 5x times 2x, I get 10x squared, remember? 5x times negative 3, so I get negative 15x, All right? And then I'm done. Here, negative 3 times x squared, so negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times negative 4x is positive 12x. And negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. So it's important to like worry about your signs as well. So what we're going to be doing um, is basically the opposite of that when we're factoring out what you call the greatest common factor. So notice when I multiply this like into these pieces, um, these three pieces, they did not share any parts. They didn't have anything in common. And now that I multiplied that negative 3 in there, now they all divide by negative 3. Um, so that's what we need to look for. So when you look at this problem here, um, there's an x here, there's no x there, so I can't take out an x, but um, I look at the 12 and the 18, and I have to think of their greatest common factor. So I have to think of all the things that 12 divides by and all the things that 18 divides by, um, or all the factors, basically. So 12, um, you know, 1 goes into everything, we're not interested in that, but um, 12 divides by 2, 12 divides by 3, by 4, not 5, it divides by 6, and that's it. Whereas 18, 18 divides by 2, divides by 3, not 4, not 5, 6, yes, 7, no, 8, no, 9, yes, and that's the last one. All right, so the greatest thing that they have in common is going to be the 6, right? So I'm going to pull out a 6. So if I pull out a 6, what I'm effectively doing, I'm dividing these by 6 because I'm like undoing the multiplication, basically. So that leaves me with a 2x. Uh, minus 3. And so if you've done it right, you notice that 2 and 3 now have nothing in common. Nothing divides into both 2 and 3 at the same time. Okay? So I'm not going to go into such, such detail over here, but um, we'll just talk about each one. So 10 and 30, they would have a 10 in common they would both divide by. Um, 30 and 15 would have 15, but 10 and 15 don't have 10 in common, they don't have 15 in common, so I'm just going to have to go with 5. The, all these things divide by 5, okay? And they all have an x, so this guy here has x to the third, this x squared, this is x. So the most that they have in common is an x to the first power. So I'm going to have 5 with an x, and so really what's happening here is I'm imagining this divided by 5x, right? So it leaves me 2 with an x squared. And then 30 divided by 5 leaves me with a 6. x squared with 1x out leaves me an x. Minus 15 divided by 5 over here leaves me 3. And the x that was right here is, remember, gone out there. So if you imagine multiplying this back out, then it would work out to the original problem, right? So you can always do that. So also one thing to note, 2, 6, and 3 have nothing in common anymore. Okay, so um, we're going to learn how to factor trinomials down here in a minute, but to do that, you have to be good at multiplying. You have to be good at um, foiling, basically, like first outside, inside, last. So we're going to practice that here. So I have x times x, that's x squared. x times 9, so plus 9x. Then the inside, um, that's plus 5x. And then the last part, that's plus 45. So the reason that we call this foil is because x times x, that's my first part. Um, x times 9, that's my outer part. 5 times x, that's my inner, and then um, 5 times 9, those are the last two. All right, so FOIL is a common thing. All right, um, so combine like terms. These two in the middle usually go together. So I get x squared plus 14x plus 45. So some things to like take note of, the 5 and the 9 are what make the 45 here. And because there's nothing in front of the x's, then the 5 and the 9 positive, that's what's adding up to 14. So when I go factor this later, I'm going to be, start off with numbers that multiply to 45, but at the same time, I'm going to know I want something that adds up to 14, okay? All right, so over here, I get 2x times x, so that's 2x squared. 2x times negative 4, so negative 8x, and then plus 3x, and then minus 12. 
So I got 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. Now this problem is a little bit harder because it has a 2x right here. So notice 3 and 4, I'm still getting something that multiplies to 12, but no, not, no longer am I going to have the 3 and the 4 going to be adding up to 5. It's because this 2 is affecting my problem. So this is a little bit harder problem. It has a leading coefficient that's not 1, whereas this one over here had a 1 in front. That's, a lead, that's an easier problem to do later. All right, here, x times x, x squared, x times negative 5, negative 5x, and I get negative 3x, and then positive 15. So I have x squared minus 8x plus 15. So now let's take a look at some of the sign issues here. Here everything was positive, so notice everything was positive. Here I had a positive and a negative, so my last term is negative, and depending on which part's bigger, that tells me what the sign here is going to be. All right, so look here, I have two negatives. Well, two negatives multiplies to a positive. So the way that the last, the way to tell what your signs are are this. If the last number is positive, last number is positive, then you're going to look at the middle number, the middle part. The middle part's positive, so they're both positive. Here, last number is positive, the middle is negative, so they're both negative. So if you have two positives or two negatives, that's, that happens to you when the last number is positive, because that's the only thing that multiplies to a positive is two positives or two negatives. Now, when the signs are different, you're automatically going to have a negative on the end, um, but you have to do some inspection to see you know, which sign is positive and which one's negative. It just depends. It, it might be one plus. It doesn't matter how they go. Like, like, I mean, it does matter, but like, you have to figure that out later. All right, let's see. Here I got x squared minus 2x plus 8x minus 16. So I have x squared plus 6x minus 16. So notice, the last part was negative. Oh, so that means that the signs are 1 plus and 1 minus, just like over here. Now, this one came out positive because the 8x was bigger than the 2x, so that's why. So he won the battle and got 6x, whereas over here, the negative 8 was bigger than the 3, so that's why it was negative 5. Okay, all right, and this last one is a little bit of a special case. Notice it's the same two expressions, but one's plus and one's minus. So I get 9x squared, then plus uh, 12x, then minus 12x, and then minus 16. So remember this for later, because look what happens here. 12x minus 12x go away, and I have 9x squared minus 16. So this right here, these are perfect squares, right? 9 is a perfect square, 16 is a perfect square, and it is the difference of perfect squares. And we say it's a difference because there's a minus in the middle. So this is a subtraction of two perfect squares. That's going to be important later. And it's also going to be important to remember that it comes from a minus and a plus with the same two things split up. Okay. All right. So let's go down here. So now we're going to go to factoring, which is what we really wanted to do. Now your teacher or me, you know, we might do a little trick like this. Um, we might draw like a a little x and so forth and put like the number 12 up here and the number positive 8 down here and we use it to figure out what numbers match up but I'm just going to do this like the old-fashioned way all right we're just going to use our brain we're going to write down some numbers that multiply to 12 and could make us 8 so let's set it up first of all it's also good to check 1x squared 8x and 12 have nothing in common there is no GCF to take out so I know x squared is going to split into x and x my next job is this. Think of some numbers that make 12. It has to multiply to 12. The numbers that multiply to 12 need to go here and here. Okay? All right, so obviously 1 and 12. Uh, 2 times 6. 3 times 4. These are all the things that make 12. And those are all the pairs of integers that multiply to 12. So another thing to notice. Um, both of my, all my signs are positive. So these have to be plus. So that's the only time I'm going to go ahead and like, put the signs in is when I know that one's when I know that they're both positive or both negative. Okay. So I need to put numbers here that add up to 8, all right? The outside and the inside part from my multiplication up here, that's what makes the middle. So this part needs to that x and that x have to make 8. So I look up here and I'm pretty sure it's 2 and 6. So it doesn't matter how I put it in these easy problems. So 2 here and 6 there. So look, 6x and 2x. They're both positive. They add up to 8x. 
so we have it. And so you do one last check, you're like, okay, two times six, that's 12. This adds up to eight X. All right, so we're set, we factored it. All right, over here, again, no GCF to take out, so X and X. Now I just write down things that make 14. So one and 14, um, two and seven, okay, and that's it. All right, so I'm thinking I'm gonna go with seven and two because um, that I can tell that seven and two subtract to five. So seven here and two there. It doesn't matter where you put them because this is such an easy one, like a basic one. So let's see, this one's two X and this one's seven X. So decide what signs you want. You know that they have to be opposite signs, like one plus and one minus. That's how you're gonna get this negative 14. So try it out. Um, I want five. So if I do positive seven minus two, that's gonna get me my five. So positive seven minus two. And there we have it. Do one last check. Seven times negative two is negative 14. Good. All right, so no GCF, X and X. Things that multiply to six. So I've got one times six, and I have three times two. So one and six is not gonna make this uh, one in the middle that I need, because um, one and six would add up to seven or subtract to five. So I'm gonna use a three and the two. So three and two, so let's test it out. This is two X, that's three X. So I'm gonna need positive two minus three, because I know my signs are opposite because of the negative six. So negative three plus two does it. All right, no GCF, so I got X and X. Um, all right, things that make 14. I mean, sorry, 16. I got one and 16, that's a lot of times not the one I want. Um, I got four times four, eight times two, so eight and two. Eight and two add up to 10, and uh, that's what we're gonna need. Also, this is a positive 16. So it's a positive 16, so I either have two pluses or two minuses. Well, I can tell they're two minuses because of that negative there. So minus, minus, and we put our eight and our two, and let's do a check. This is a negative two X, that's negative eight X. Um, negative eight times negative two multiply to positive 16, and we have it. All right, this last one here. So let's try and factor this, let's see. X, I need things that multiply to 15. Negative 15, so one's plus and one's minus at this point, I know. All right, so let's try. Um, I got one and 15, and five and three. Okay, one and 15 don't add or subtract to seven, and neither do five and three. I'm not gonna be able to do this. Um, nothing is gonna match up, so when something doesn't factor, you call it prime. So every once in a while, someone tries to trick you and give you a problem that doesn't factor, so um, you know, not often do we see that, but that's that. Bye-bye.